Hey guys, welcome back to the Underground. I am Super Gassy, and this is week nine of the PGL. Oh my god, so competitive. But we are currently three and four plus two, and uh, yeah, we're on a slippery slope here, so we can't really lose too many more battles. I think we can only afford to lose like one. So this is a very pivotal match for me in the season. Um, if I win this, then I can still go on the rest of the season and risk losing one more game um, versus, you know, a very very some very good opponents that i have left for the rest of the season if i lose this then i'm gonna struggle more with other teams and blah blah and uh yeah so i think i had a pretty good matchup versus um equa's team here and uh yeah so i brought scarf haunch crow uh with sucker punch for scarf heliolisk possibly i brought colberberry starmie for the crocodile that did not come with signal beam grass knot and scald for the celebi and the Excuse me, my Lotic. Um, bulky Swords Dance Scizor, enough so that if he did bring Mega Altaria, um, I could live a Fire Blast if he didn't have too much special attack investment. Um, I was figuring if he did bring Mega Altaria, it had to be Earthquake, Hyper Voice, uh, Fire Blast with Roost, and um, that would basically kind of like just screw me over. But he didn't bring it, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, I got Shell Smash Crustle with Hardstone, Stone Edge, Rock Blast, and Earthquake, which can get a late game sweep versus him if I'm very uh, precise about it. And Assault Vest Azumarill uh, to take on the possible Mega Hound Doom because um, I can take an HP Electric or like a Solar Beam and basically knock him back with a Waterfall or just Aqua Jet if the sun isn't up and two shot it or if it's weakened etc um you know they that and scissor also help out with the possible terrakion that's possible to come which did end up coming for some reason um magneton is like a kind of defensive set kind of like a pivoty set with protect um just so i can scout his team i have something to kind of take volt switches from heliolisk and then kind of scout what he's gonna do with the rest of his team and uh yeah so as you can see this man brought alakazam Avalug, Mega Hound Doom, Heliolisk, uh, Celebi, and Terrakion. So I'm thinking he's probably going to lead the Terrakion because it's either his Stealth Rocker or he just wants to get big all big damage off on me before I can basically kill him with a Bullet Punch or Aqua Jet. Um, or he'll lead with the Celebi just because the Celebi um, could have Stealth Rocks also and that could be his lead of choice, which is fine by me because if he does lead with that, so... Yeah, overall, I think my best lead is Honchkrow because the only thing that really stops it or takes a hit from it is going to be Alakazam. And Alakazam, I mean, not Alakazam, Avalug. And he's not going to really lead Avalug because uh, my possible lead is always Crustle with things. So he's probably going to predict that. Um, I have been running Crustle as a lead very often, so he's probably going to not think it's a sweeper and just think it's like a Stealth Rocks um, Spikes Custap lead, which is fine. So, let's get right into the battle here. Ah, let's get right into the battle. I am running some power this week, so Equa issuing that challenge is not even bad. Um, he's gonna start off with the Terrakion, as I kind of thought, so I'm thinking this is his Stealth Rocker, and I'm gonna go for the Super Power first turn. Now, he's Jolly. He's Jolly here, so, and Choice Scarf, and that's so he could speed tie with a Scarf Infernape. Um, and I just go for the superpower. I live on one from the close combat, and that's because he was jolly. It was like a 75% chance to kill. And, uh, yeah, that's very unfortunate for him, because if he had gotten that damage roll, um, he wouldn't have struggled so much with, uh, Honchkrow being able to basically kind of run through things and whatnot. Um, again, though, like, I feel like I just had the better matchup here. Uh, you you'll see later on why it doesn't matter too much. But he does go out into Houndoom here, and then double straight back to his Celebi as I just go for the superpower because he did realize I was Scarf and um, he did not have Sucker Punch from the team builder that I saw before recording this, uh, not before our battle. So I didn't see his team builder until after our battle, that, you know, blah, blah. So I go for the superpower again, he switches into the Selby, that's fine. I'm gonna go into my Magneton here just to kind of scout for what he's gonna do. He goes for the Leech Seed and I'm thinking, oh god, this is a cheeky ass set. This is one of those cheeky sub seed sets and this is gonna be really annoying, especially if he's sub Calm Mind Leech Seed with like an attacking move or something. Um, gonna be really annoying. Gonna be really annoying. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. So 
he's going to switch out here as I believe I just go for the Volt Switch, uh, trying to get some initiative here. Um, if he was going to go for the Earth Power, I wanted to know if he had it, and that's fine. Like, I'm fine with losing my Magneton. I don't need it that much in this matchup. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to Volt Switch, go out into Al Capone here, and shoot off a Superpower because nothing on his team really wants to take a Superpower other than maybe the Celebi which is fine by me. So yeah, I'm just going to shoot off a superpower, get off damage on this Avalog. As I can see, that is definitely specially defensive by the damage that I did. I am not, I actually am adamant um, because I could run Adam. I, am I adamant? No, I'm jolly. I'm, I'm definitely jolly. I remember being jolly. So yeah, I did a shit done to that Avalog. Um, I'm going to switch out here into my Scizor because I know he's either going to go for the ice type move or just go for the earthquake whatever he can't really do too much to me as you see that earthquake did probably like 20 percent but i'm not even mega yet so that's pretty that's pretty nice that's pretty nice so right here i believe i do just go for the bullet punch or i try to set up a sword stance i can't really remember um i think i do set up a sword stance here i think i do and let's see yeah i do set up a sword stance so i have one sword stance up and I can, I don't know why he switched into the Celebi on this, because I could have had U-turn, but he does just go for the Leech Seed as I just go for the Bug Bite, I believe. No, I go for a Roost. Okay. I Yeah, I was scouting for the Hidden Power Fire because I am specially defensive, enough to the point where I could take an HP Fire from a defensive Celebi, and he showed me that he kind of was defensive as soon as he went for the Leech Seed. So that's perfectly fine by me. He's going to go for a Giga Drain here, and I was still expecting the Hidden Power Fire, but it never showed up. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to go for a Bug Bite. And this will take out the Celebi. So Mega Scizor with one kill, and uh, that's fine. That's all dandy. Um, oh, God, Mega Scizor was just so good in this game. <laughs> oh, God. So he does go into his Mega Hound Doom. I cannot take it out with a Bullet Punch, and I don't want to risk my Scizor because it's a big win con right now. So I'm just going to go into my Haunch Crow. If he wants to set up a Nasty Plot, I'm faster than him. If he wants to just straight up kill me, that's fine. I'm going to let him have this kill. I'm going to let him have this kill because it's my best uh, move to make, basically, because Haunch Crow is only at 1 HP. As soon as it shoots off a Brave Bird or something, it's going to die. So no point in keeping it around. I'm going to go into Bunny Ranch here, my Zoomerel, and uh, I am Assault Vest, so this Hidden Power Electric of his is not going to do anything. So, hmm. Now, right here, I go for the play rough because I was predicting him to switch into Celebi. And he knows I'm a Salt Vest now, so I can just go for an Aqua Jet. And I believe I do go for an Aqua Jet here, right? Yeah, I couldn't take the risk that he would stay in. And uh, I could have, but I, I couldn't take the risk of him switching into Celebi on my Zoomerill, basically. So I'm going to switch out here. I'm going to go back into my Scizor, I believe. Yep. Go back in my scissor because I know I can take any hit from this thing. It can't really do anything to me. I mean, unless it has like counter, which I, I don't think he's carrying because he needs it to have rapid spin. He already has earthquake and he has to have avalanche or like a stab move. So yeah, right here, I'm just going to set up a sword stance because it's pretty free to set up a sword stance against an avalog. Um, and now I'm thinking here, he might be Focus Sash, but if he's Focus Sash, a Hidden Power Fire doesn't kill. I go for the Bullet Punch, and I take him out in one shot. No Focus Sash, so he was actually Life Orb. Um, and yeah, so right here, the Mega Houndoom is in range of a Bullet Punch at plus two after that Play Rough. I'm gonna take it out right here with a Bullet Punch. Dead Houndoom, GG. <laughs> and he's gonna go into Tomato, which is his Heliolisk, and this is in range of a bug bite i believe i th i think i go for it yeah and that'll take out the heliolisk if it doesn't i can just bullet punch and that'll kill it but it kills so you can see where this is kind of heading um he goes out into mountain i think i just roost on this thing just to make sure that i preserve differential and that this thing really can't do anything to me like i'm so defensive that an earthquake from this thing i think literally does like 20 let's see yeah, a little bit over it. So I'm going to go for the bullet punch and two of these will definitely take him out. He doesn't even try going for the recover because he knows if he does, I can just eventually wear him down and uh, set up more sword stances. So another bullet punch will be able to take out the Avalog here. And that should be GG, um, I believe. 
So Scizor getting five kills this game. I picked this up from Chu. I get a crit there. I don't think the crit, the crit didn't matter. Um, so some pivotal things about this game. Uh, first turn, close combat, not killing me. Uh, that was very huge because it allowed me to take out a Serachion. Uh, but also it wasn't that huge because he did take the risk of running Jolly when in reality, if I was running, I told him if I was running Scarf Infernape, I would have Mach Punch, so I don't risk that speed tie with a Terrakion or whatnot. Um, I also have Scizor and Azumarill, so even if he killed me with a close combat, that just forces in Azumarill and gives me a pretty free play rough or waterfall or whatever that I want to go for or anything like that. I could have also went into Starmie and just gone for the Signal Beam as the obvious Celebi comes in. Um, a lot of things could have happened. I don't feel like that turn one uh, roll really mattered too much. It just allowed Honchkrow to get a kill and stay around as a death fodder later on, which was very pivotal. Um, him bringing this team was a bit scary at first because I was predicting... I, I was fearful of Sunny Day, Solar Beam, uh, Life Orb... No, so a sunny day celebi passing into a solar power heliolisk which i had no switch ins to if it had him power fire and the sun no switch ins whatsoever so that would have been scary um the f i don't know why he didn't have focus ash on his alakazam um he just very much built for kieran black and infernape and cresselia all of which did not come so yeah i don't know um I don't know really what happened there. Uh, it was just kind of like bad team prep on his part a little bit. I have to say not to offend him, but I just think that I told him after the match, I said um, things that really broke my team down. Solar power, Heliolisk with Life Orb, I had no switch ins at all. A Thunderbolt still pretty much took out um, Azumarill at that after with that um, solar power boost and Life Orb. And three, like I said, the three attacks Mega Altaria in the beginning of the game, if he brought that, it was going to be very stressful on me because I have two steel types that are both four times weak to both of its moves. So that's very frustrating on my part. Um, I did EV the Magneton so that it could take an earthquake from a almost no attack Mega Altaria. So if he was mixed that way, I could take an earthquake with Magneton or I could take a Fire Blast with Mega Scizor, or I had Assault Vesta Zoomerel to kind of soft check it, which even then, that's a very hard switch in, and uh, that, that would take some mind games to pull off. So that was very stressful for me, um, if he did bring it. Uh, Milotic, I don't know why he didn't bring it. Um, that thing literally s would stop like half my team. Um, it was a good, uh, another good Azumarill switch in. It was another good Scizor switch in, it could Scald Burn everything on my team. Um, recover, you know, things like that. I mean, I understand that you don't want to bring it because of Kieran B, but you can still throw a Wakanberry on it with like maybe, I, I don't know, something like that. But it's still very stressful versus my team. You shouldn't let one threat threaten you from bringing one thing. Um, you know, his team had like Terrakion and all this other crap. Um, but that didn't stop me from bringing like Honchkrow or Magneton, you know, just, I don't know. So, um, yeah, the Alakazam I saw coming, the Avalug I saw coming, the Mega Houndoom was a 50-50 for me because I knew that if he brought Mega Houndoom, he can't bring Mega Altaria. If he brought Mega Altaria, he can't bring Mega Houndoom. So either one he's going to bring, um, you know. I was more on the side of Mega Altaria, but I could see the Mega Houndoom coming too, just for the Scizor, um, because, yeah, Scizor. Um, Heliolisk I saw coming 100% because I have no ground type on my team. Um, Celebi I saw coming because it's his only real good um, Azumarill switch in, or Starmie switch in, etc. Things like that. And instead of the Terrakion, I was kind of predicting the Milotic because Milotic was also another good Azumarill switch in. It was a good Scizor switch in. It was a decent Starmie switch in, and he could run the Mirror Coat to with Wakanberry to basically take out my Magneton or also take out my Starmie if it had Thunderbolt um, 
or Grass Knot actually did more, and that's why I was running Grass Knot over Thunderbolt for everyone wondering. Um, and Scald Burns are just always annoying. So, you know, that's that would have been really annoying. But it was a good game either way. And uh, I, I do feel that that turn one not killing close combat was very unfortunate, but I don't think it mattered in the long term of the game where Scizor just kind of destroyed everything and Crustle and Starmie never even touched the field. So, I don't know. Um, actually, did Crustle touch? No, Crustle and Starmie never touched the field. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so I hope you guys did enjoy. We are still in this. We are still in this. We are so in this right now. Um, as it's looking... Um, I'm not too sure of who's lost and won this week so far. I can't really remember that. But I know we are 4-4 four and four plus 7. So if... I think Nate had a bye week this week. Um, and Dokes is playing C. So I actually kind of need Dokes to win that one. And then I need Dokes to... I need to beat Dokes and I need to beat Nate. And then they play each other week 13. So one of them is also going to have a fifth loss on them if I beat both of them. And that will give me a playoff spot, essentially, um, because I do have a better differential than both of them right now, I, I believe. Except for Nate. No, Nate's two above me, but he's also a, a win ahead of me. So I'm not that far behind him. If I do beat him that one week, then I will have a better di differential than him. And that will force the hand of week 13 coming on where he plays dokes and then one of them has to lose and then one of them's out of playoffs that week um if i do succeed in my kiwi plans that i have going on so next week we do go up against t train and the dragon den dratinis a very tough opponent this week he is by far like one of the top players this season and uh well deserved because he is running mega latios very well um his team is very scary and it's going to be hard to build against so i will see you guys next week for pgl week 10 and i hope you guys well enjoy it so make sure to dig that like button and leave a comment down below also subscribe if you aren't already and i will see you guys in the next one bye